Yo, what's up guys and gals, this is Jacob Karash from TB10 Studios, and today I'm going to show you how I edit. Now, you may be asking, like, what do you mean you're going to show us how you edit? I'm going to show you my editing workflow, what softwares I use, because I use multiple softwares, and I'm going to teach you some basic organization when it comes to video editing, something it took me quite some time to learn, and I don't want you to suffer through really complicated and messy timelines like I did when I first started out. So let's get right into the video. So I originally started off with the common media folder uh, tactic to organizing my media. And it was really helpful getting started, but I didn't quite understand how to properly use it. So I kind of turned it into my own thing. So it's not quite the common media folder. <laughs> But um, I made it into my own thing and just made it simpler for my own brain. So you might have to do that with um, this because it's different for everybody. But it's pretty much just to make things easier if you're sharing your work to other editors and you've got multiple people working on one project at the same time. I think it's just really helpful and really great. Let's just call it the Jacob Media Folder because, you know, it is my media folder. But I'm literally going to edit this video. Well, I'm basically going to edit the first half, the part that has the audio from my sound recorder and my separate microphone and the camera. Now I'm currently using the Canon Rebel T3i, which I'm coming out with a new video on soon. I'm actually planning on filming it <laughs> this the day I'm filming this right now. I'm filming this at like midnight, so um, later this day, the 29th, is it? The 28th, is the 28th? Today is the 30th. Today is the 30th. I was wrong. I was wrong. Today's the 30th. Um, I'm just blind and don't know anything. Don't know how the, that correlates, but whatever. So let's quickly hop over to my computer and we'll talk about my file structure, my template file structure, my softwares that I use, and what I what all I do. Like setting proxies. So let's get over to the computer. All right, now we're on the computer. So I'm gonna start offloading my footage. So let me grab my USB and my SD card reader. Plug it in. I can reach my plug. What I always do is I just I just happen to always <laughs> offload my camera footage first. It doesn't really matter what order you offload your footage, but I just. I just always start with my camera footage because that's the one that always makes me nervous. So I take my time on that one. I really don't know why I upload it first, but you know, it's just because I can. So here it is on the EOS Digital. So this is the little tab I have here. I'm going to move it. Right here is my video project timeline template. Or just my video project file template. What I do is I copy it. I open File Explorer again, new tab of it. Let's bring that over here. I scroll down to my backup drive because that's what I'm editing off of right now until I get a second drive. And so you can see I set up my common media folder. I'm going to open up, uh, make a new file, YouTube TB10 Studios. Let's go here and then paste the project file in there. It's calculating, yada yada yada. Rename this to uh, editing work. Uh, well, I'm gonna rename it to editing workflow tutorial. Once you open this, it's got the project file. It's got project files. Cook. Uh, why I say cooking? Footage, audio, music, and in project file, it will switch. The two, those are two softwares I use Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. So let's go to footage. It says camera A, and then there will be camera A proxy. There are two ways to do in proxies. I'll explain the one I use later. But camera A, I'm going to rename, keep the number one and the underscore. And we're going to name this. I just named the actual name of Canon uh, camera, so I'm gonna say Canon because I only have one Canon camera. Or what I'll say is Canon underscore T 
three hour space T3I. Jeez, capital T, T3I. And that's how I know. And then I will offload the full resolution clip, which is this one clip that I just filmed that you just saw. Let that upload, so let me just cut. So, this is offloaded from here, so what we can do is go down here, go to drives, right click, and hit ex eject EOS digital. And that is now eject my SD card, because I don't want to damage or corrupt anything. In case I want to like do anything, I don't want to damage my camera, don't want to risk it, so whenever I eject a SD card or a hard drive, that is what I do. I don't just yank it from my computer, because you will always risk damaging the device itself. So I would not ever do that. Now I'm going to grab my Zoom H1N, which is my sound recorder, take out the mini SD card. I know you can't see it, but um, this is what I'm doing. And plug that in to my mini SD card reader. And that should load up that right here. Removable disk, it's just what it's labeled, that's fine. Doesn't really matter. What I'm gonna do is go, to, uh, go back to editing workflow tutorial, go to audio, go to recorder A. I just leave it at recorder A unless I'm using multiple cameras or multiple sound recorders. If I'm using like a Zoom H1 and then I'm using the Zoom H1N, and they're both being used at one time, I will obviously label which is which because I will know from shooting who was using what, a which. So here, I'm just gonna grab stereo. Now I have two audio files. This one right here, the number two WAV file is the one I just recorded. I'm gonna offload that. That takes like no time at all because it's just an audio file and doesn't have video metadata to worry about. And then what I do is I like, get out of here then eject removable disk. Who just freaking texted me? Now let's open a project. Let's go to Premiere Pro. Let's hit project template dot P R P R O J, which is Premiere Pro project. And it's a template project that I need just this. It boots up a template project here. Give it a minute. I'm running on a slow Windows computer. That's why I'm, I use proxies because it takes forever to edit. And then here I set up sequences, footage, audio, music, graphics, whatever. This is just a baseline thing. So, what I can do here, camera A, I'm going to duplicate camera A, and then I'm going to rename it from copy to underscore proxies. And then all the proxies will be put in there. So what I'm going to do is hit footage, open up camera A, um, I can rename this to Canon as well. Maybe. I'm gonna underscore Canon T, geez, T3i. And then I can do the same here. Gosh dang, I can't find anything here today. Canon T3i. Perfect. And then. Audio, I just leave nothing in there. But so what we're gonna do, maybe, is we're gonna go two footage. Nope, two footage. Canon T3i. Grab the footage and drag it into the Canon T3i folder. Obviously. Now that that's there, you can see if you double click, if you double click on it, you've got it in the source thing, or what? The what you call it? <laughs> you've got all the data on it. It's shot in 24 frames per second, or 23.976, same thing. Then go to audio, go to the audio here, go to my recorder A, zoom, drop that into the audio section, and boom, we've got the audio, we can listen to it. I originally started off with the common media folder. Now you can hear that, there you go. You can also hear the background noise, but it will sound a lot better when I'm done editing it. <laughs> so, we go up to here to sequences. Click new sequence. I have my own like custom one, but let's not mess with that. Let's go, let's get out of custom. Go to, um, where is it? Red R 3D. Now, yes, we didn't shoot in a red camera, but we shot in 1080p. So, we're gonna hit 1080p, 16 by nine aspect ratio at 23.976 frames per second. That 
is going to be our sequence. I don't know why it's listed as sequence two. Um, I'm going to rename this as editing work workflow <laughs> underscore sequence. I don't have to name it that, but you can name whatever. That's just what I choose to do. Next thing I do is I save. I save this. In fact, no, I don't hit. I don't just hit save. I hit save as. And I click that, and then I rename it. Editing workflow, or whatever the project name is, and boom. Now you can easily access that. Let's go to footage. Drop our footage, or actually, before we drop on our our footage on timeline. So actually, let's do that on track, timeline quickly. Just. I have it set to one quarter because that's how I used to edit. Now I have it full. And you can see it's running smoothly. But when I start adding effects, that was a horrible freeze frame. Um, if I start adding effects and stuff, it's going to start to affect my computer and start to slow it down. And if I have a lot of things on my timeline, it will really start to slow it down. So what I do here is I click my clips or shift click all of your clips, right click, go down to proxy then click create proxy it's gonna load up some stuff now I'm gonna put low resolution proxy which is one of the lowest resolution proxies out there and then I'm also gonna have it set to H.264 I'm gonna browse the proxy I'm gonna I can drop it into this folder here click select and it will make a proxy and then I can drop that proxy once I go into here should make it maybe it has to open up media encoder I know it seems like a hassle it really isn't if you want to make the most out of your workflow so yeah it will bring you out into media encoder this is one way I'll show you the other way a faster way to do it but this is the old way to do it if I, if it will finish loading. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Is it not in the queue? There we go. It's in the queue. It's going to use my GPU. So if you lose frames, if it looks laggy on your screen, that's perfectly normal because I'm using my graphics card to record this video. And now I'm also using my graphics card to export this, this proxy version. So it will quickly down res this entire file to, uh, as it says down down um, down here, 1024 by 540 resolution, still in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's going to take a minute, so I'll I'll just cut to it. All right, so it stopped with the proxy. Drag your file onto your timeline. Um, then hit toggle proxies, it will automatically switch out the full resolution version for the lower resolution version. This is me dancing. Don't, don't mind that. We'll make this our little hero shot as we call it. Um, what I like to do is I like to add a quick, quick color grade. I don't actually color grade in this software. I color grade in DaVinci Resolve. So I like to add a quick color grade just to, um, uh, actually I need to make this preset. I haven't made this preset yet, which is foolish of me, but just increase the contrast just a little bit. It's a little bit too much. Um, is it right about there? Bring in, down the shadows a bit and the highlights just a bit up. Bring the Lumetri scopes up a bit so I can just see exactly what it's talking like that like what my limit is pretty much there we go might just reset the highlights so I'm not like reaching too high you know just bring it up just t t tad yep good my blacks are nowhere near where they should be or at least like bring the shadows down a bit and then bring the blacks all the way down just before the zero line there and that is a pretty decent 
quick color correction just to get a feel for what the image, the final product should look like. I might actually bring back some of the highlights a bit. Just so I'm not like risking it here. Yeah, I think that looks looks best. And then that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna right click on this one and hit save preset. I'm gonna name this Canon Cine Style to Rec dot seven oh nine seven oh nine LUT. It's not a LUT, it's a preset, but I'm just gonna name it LUT, because I can. And you go up to limitry presets, or just normal presets, and it should show up there. Yep. And this will work on properly ex any properly exposed. Um, any properly exposed Canon Cine style footage. I just like to work with this, I prefer it. Just so I can get a sense of what the final product will be. Now we're going to close out the footage tab, go on the audio. Click into here. And drop your audio into the timeline. Right click all, of, like select it all. Right click it all, hit synchronize. It will probably say from clip start or clip end. You want to go down to audio. So it will match the audio waveforms. And sync the audio. Then I just replace the um camera audio with my much better sounding actual microphone audio so i just i just dropped that there oh i just dropped that there kind of try to i just delete off the edges pretty much or i will mute it by going up to here and volume and just dropping it completely who is texting me all right, so once you've got that set up, you've got everything synced, you're going to go to effect controls. Now, my layout here for editing is very different. I like it this way just because that's how I had it in Hit Film Express, and I actually really liked it that way. So we're going to make sure you're clicked onto the actual audio here. First thing I'm going to do, uh, we're going to start playing it for you. Made it simpler for my own brain, so you, you might have to do that with... Um, this what I'm gonna do is add a single band compressor. But it's pretty much just to make bring it to voice leveler. I'm gonna turn and, off yeah. the um, audio for you guys, and um, you'll just see a before and after, or you'll hear it when you listen to the video. Graphic equalizer 30 band. I will take out that one, and here I kind of go out like this until I start hearing it affect the audio in a bad way. Alright, so this, anything before 10,000, 10k, I drop. What I'm going to do here, is perfect this is perfect for what I want what I can do here X out here and then grab a parametric equalizer vocal enhancer just slightly bring that to like right there let's not hop over to Premiere Pro editing software there you go me then, I'm going to close out of that, we're going to click Denoise. I always, to middle frequencies, and bring it down to about 5 to 6%. I like it on 6%, so it's perfect. And then, add my good old hard limiter, bring it to negative 6 dB, and there we go. Negative 6 decibels. And this is my audio set up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab I'm gonna Okay, just click on all jeez. Control click on all of these. Hit save preset. I'm gonna save it as um Jacob or um st 
studio audio shotgun because I'm using a shotgun mic for this one underscore TB 10 hit OK then what I can do is go to my presets and it's got everything so if I delete this no I don't want to delete that I want to delete these guys if I delete that just drag that onto the audio it will apply all of these settings so I don't have to re-edit these all the time it will make life so much easier this is also a really great clip of me little just a lovely lovely freeze frame